Steve, can you help us out, pray, please? Yep. Heavenly Father, how great are you, Lord? Thank you for this morning. Thank you for all your mercy and love. And Lord, I only pray that, again, you continue to be changing each one of these men, continue to be molding us and making us into the image that we were designed to be, Lord. Help us understand all that we talk about, all we read in the Bible this morning. Help us to uh, absorb and, uh, and, uh, and learn. Teach us, Lord. Thank you for Moe, who uh, guides us through this study. Thank you for the men in this group, Lord, and too, for as we uh, come together as one brother, as, as brothers in, in the worship and uh, learning of one God. In Yeshua's name, Amen. When I, I just, I just can pray for you. Yeah, I can pray for Todd, who, again with the storm, Lord. Again, just protection for him and the wolf as he travels. And, and again, Lord, just bless this uh, time that we're together. In Yeshua's name, Amen. 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 So today we are reviewing session number forty-one, uh, the book or the Gospel of Mark. So start up in a, uh, opening your Bibles in that Gospel, Gospel of Mark. <coughs> In Hebrew, uh, Mark uh, is Johanan Marcos. Johanan Marcos. Uh, so the second gospel in our in our Bibles, and remember uh, the four gospels uh, refer to Yeshua in different ways. So last week we saw that Matthew uh, showed the Yeshua as a lion, as a roaring of a lion, uh, with his sermons. Today, we are going to review Mark, and he will present Yeshua as a calf. He will present a lot of miracles for uh, made from Yeshua uh, as a testimony, mostly for Romans, also for Jews, but mostly for Romans. And this is one of the, uh, this is actually the shortest uh, gospel of the four. Uh, this is just 16 chapters, and actually they are short chapters. Uh, so it is. It, it will be an interesting uh, gospel. So let's read this uh, coming from Mark 8, 34 to 37 as an introduction. Because this is maybe the most popular verses in, in this gospel. And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? So interesting chapters, uh, interesting passage of the Bible uh, to reflect. How am I denying myself till this day? And what, what am I uh, getting distracted with instead of just following him? Sometimes we get distracted very easily with the news, with uh, pending uh, things that we have in our busy, busy life. Uh, but still, th these words are very important. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Interesting, interesting words uh, coming from this gospel of Mark. Let's see the uh, generalities of this gospel. <clears throat> the, the book himself uh, wrote uh, by Johann and Mark. And actually, that's not the title of the book. This is uh, the title of the author of the book of the gospel, Johann and Mark written by Mark or attributed to Mark. Uh, it is a gospel addressed. This, this particular um, gospel is addressed to Gentiles. As Matthew, different as Matthew, that was addressed to Jews. This one is addressed to Gentiles. So it will explain uh, some things uh, specifically for Gentiles. It is being written in Judea. It is possibly the first writing of the New Testament. So this might be the first test, uh, and that's maybe why it's so short. It's just a quick compilation of Yeshua's life. So maybe maybe the, the first uh, writing of the New Testament. 
and why it is to prove to Romans and Jews with signs and miracles that Yeshua is the Messiah. So let's do a quick outline of the book of, or the gospel of Mark. Mark. So chapter one will be just an introduction. Chapters two to 10, the ministry of power of Yeshua. And chapters 11 to 16, the rejection, death and resurrection of Yeshua. Well, let's see, let's open up our Bibles and let's start reading right away. In the Gospel of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Matthew, here we go, Mark, Mark chapter one. <clears throat> Let me read chapter one for you. Uh, remember, uh, as in these four Gospels, we are not having an, an specific uh, practical part of the of the session as in the others uh, in the other books, because here is very important for us to look what Yeshua is actually telling us today to work on. Okay, so it is important for you to maybe underline uh, those verses or those words that hit your heart so you can start work on them. Okay, so chapter one. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ or Yeshua the Messiah, the son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the, in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going now to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locust and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, than I the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Yeshua came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately dropped him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now, after John was arrested, Yeshua came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the, brothers of Sim uh, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Yeshua said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fisher fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a, li on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Sevidi in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Shabbat, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Yeshua of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Yeshua rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they, they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? 
a new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up <clears throat> and the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout the whole Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. <clears throat> and a leper came to him, imploring him and kneeling, said, uh, imploring him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, e I will, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Yeshua sternly charged him and sent him away at once, and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them. But he went out and began to talk freely about it and to spread the news so that Yeshua could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in, a des in desolate places and people were coming to him from every, every quarter. So this is just chapter one. <laughs> Interesting that just right away in chapter one, actually uh, here uh, Mark doesn't uh, spend time, any time, telling where Yeshua came from. Not about Mary or Joseph or Bethlehem or any of that. He just goes directly straight to the uh, to his baptize and then starting directly with miracles, calling Simon, John, <laughs> all the guys there, Andrew, um, and right away just start preaching the gospel and, and doing miracles. So this is the whole... Um, sense of the of the gospel of mark just directly to miracles directly to actions just as a cuff just made just just for actions okay let's go to uh well i, I don't know if you want to guys share anything that just uh, came out to you uh in these few verses something that you have noticed or that uh, you find uh, useful for your life today I find it gonna... oh sorry go ahead carl I find it interesting that he tells that it's occurred several times in the Gospels. That Yeshua tells uh, the person that he heals not to say anything to anybody. Interesting. Yeah, interesting that just... Why, why, why do you think it, that could be the thing? No idea. No idea. Okay. Uh, what about you, uh, Chuck? Um, I think John uh, fills in a little more. Um, in uh, uh, John's gospel, uh, uh, Yeshua many, many times, um, uh, he will tell his mother, he'll tell his disciples, he'll tell other people that, you know, not to tell anybody, it's not my time, or I don't want to do this because it's not my time, it's not my time. And then immediately after, um, uh, uh, either immediately, yeah, immediately after um, uh, Lazarus's uh, resurrection, when they're getting ready to go uh, back to, to Jerusalem, he now changes that statement. And he says, we're going because it's now my time. It's now my time. And he repeats that uh, uh, a few times um, 
uh, between uh, uh, Lazarus and the uh, and the crucifixion. Um, uh, so you know he he's very aware. I think the entire time of I keep using the word time because I don't know that just keeps coming out of my mouth um, uh, uh, of, of the timeline that he's on, of the schedule that he's on, of what he's doing. Everything's being done very purposefully and and for a reason. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what about you, Steve? Um, yeah, I just, I, I think it's interesting because uh, I believe he's the only one, but he goes right to, uh, uh, like you said, Moy, he's right into it. But, uh, but what he refers to is uh, Isaiah, the prophet, and he goes back to that prophecy that Isaiah makes. So uh, I think in the times that um, if we put ourselves in those times and with these uh, men <clears throat> talking about Yeshua, um, uh, Mark Mark says, you know, uh, we were told that this man was coming, and here he is, and here's Isaiah saying that he's coming. So, um, yeah, that just stuck out to me this morning too. That that's uh, that's where he starts. But yeah, I, I agree with you. He's just right into the meat and potatoes, as we say, and uh, <laughs> he's into full action. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and just going back to what Carl was uh, mentioning, uh, it is interesting that he says, "Do not say anything." And right away, some of the guys just go out and spread the word about yeah. what they were just told not to say anything about it. Uh, it's interesting because actually this shows our heart. If we are paying attention to what he is telling us, or we are doing exactly the opposite of what he's asking us. So it's interesting this this uh, this this intervention that he does. Do not say anything and people just go directly and, and start speaking. And the other thing is that most of the time when he asks people not to tell anything, uh, it might be not be just only because it's not his time to be revealed, but also because other people might just come because of the miracles. And actually that's a thing that happens with Yeshua that a lot of people came just for the miracle. And by the end, he ended up uh, alone. So if we come just for Yeshua, with Yeshua, just for the miracle, we might just end up not following him, but just uh, getting our reward of the miracle, but not uh, being, in, that, that doesn't, um, it's not enough for us to follow him. At least not for a lot of people. And actually, I've seen that in in uh, in congregations that people actually cured of a cancer or a family being restored. Uh, a lot of miracles that I have uh, seen myself. Uh, but those guys just leave the church and they actually continue to live their lives as they were before. So it is very interesting that uh, we should not come for with Yeshua not just for the miracle, even if we are expecting one. So we should not expect the miracles. And that's why he says, don't tell this to anyone. Don't share this with anyone because they might be, uh, I think it's a possibility that we might be misleading other people with the miracle instead of focusing in, in Yeshua himself and his teachings. That may be just, just an option. Okay. Hasn't that, hasn't that evolved into the good news gospel, Moe? It's just like the it, things there. The good news gospel, like the Joel Olsteins and some of the other guys that just talk about good stuff. I don't get that. Uh, how is that? Well, look, well, like the, the like the, the or the prosperity gospel, right? Where oh, 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 yeah, yeah, the the prosperity gospel, I guess, is the better word, right? So, where miracles and all things are going to be good and that too, but but their yeah, their belief in that is is only based on if things are good as soon as things go bad many of them fall away right or if they don't if they stop seeing the miracles if they stop seeing things happening then it's like oh it mustn't be true so exactly yeah. exactly it, i think it has to deal with that okay so let's jump to another chapter what if we go to chapter four chapter four um carl can you help us out with chapter four please Again, he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered about him, 
so that he got out, he got into a boat and sat on, in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them uh, many things in parables. And in his teach and in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and, thorn and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into the good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and hundredfold, he said. And he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he, he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God, but for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, that they may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? The, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown in rocky ground. The one who, when they hear the word, immediately receives receive it with joy. But they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among the thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter and choke the word and proves unfruitful. And it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown in the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. And he said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed and not on a stand? For nothing is hidden except to be made manifest, nor is anything ex secret except to come, is to come to light. If anyone, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you, and still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And he said, the kingdom of the God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produce, produces by itself first the, the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, at, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, with what, can be, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? And what parable shall we use for it? It is a, like a grain of mustard seed, mustard seed which when, when so sown on the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them 
as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. On that day, when the evening had come, he said to them, let us go across the other side. And leaving the crowd, he took him, they, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he was in the stern asleep in the on the cushion and they woke him and they said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and he awoke and rebuked the wind and the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said to them why are you so afraid have you still no faith? And they filled with great fear, and he said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Thank you, thank you. Amazing chapter. Uh, it is very important for us to understand the, the parable of the sower, because in um, verse 13, uh, actually, that's why it's called the, like the, master parable of, or the key parable to the rest of the parables because he's here he says and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all the parables so this this the the parable of the sower is one of the most important parables in, in the gospels and actually what jumps uh, into my mind uh, today is that the verse 20 but those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it. That, that word accepted, it's the, the main uh, thing for me today. Uh, it's just to accept his word. Not just hear it, but accept it. And bear fruit 30 fold and 60 fold and 100 fold. Interesting. So what, anything that has uh, jumped to you uh, this morning? of this chapter number four of Mark? Also, just to mention that the parable of the seed growing is not mentioned in any other uh, of the other gospels. In the other gospels, he's not mentioned this, this parable of the seed growing. And actually he says, um, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground he sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so any any commentaries on, on this, what you, uh, Carl just read? No? Let's jump to uh, chapter 6. Let's go to chapter 6. Uh, Steve, can you help us out with uh, chapter 6, please? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom, what is the wisdom given to him? How are, how are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, and Jose, and Judas, and Simeon? <clears throat> and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And, Jesus, and Yeshua said to them, A prophet, prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could, not do, and he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went out about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except the, a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts. But to wear sandals and put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart there from there. If any place you, if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, 
when you leave, shake off the dust from your that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out, proclaimed that the people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with many or anointed me, uh, and cast out and they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. King Herod heard of it for Jesus. Name name the one named had hold on a second. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said John the Baptist has raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous power these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said he is Elijah, and others said he is a prophet, like the one like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herod Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because she had married her. He had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to take your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was as righteous as a holy man, and he kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet heard, heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For Her Herodias, his daughter, came in and danced. She pleased Herod and, and his guests. And the king said to the girl, ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he, and he vowed to her, whatever you ask me, I will give to you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and she said to her mother, for what, I, for what should I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with, with haste to the king and asked, I want to, you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry. But because of his oaths and his guests, he did what he did not want to break his word for to her. And immediately the king and, and the king sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles returned to Yeshua and told him all they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming. Oops. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away, they went away in the boat to a dead place by the I think uh, Steve's internet connection just uh, froze. <laughs> so let us continue. Because they what, were. What verse are you, Mr. Steve? What verse? Oh, I'm sorry. 34? 34. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yep, 34. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it, and when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place and the hour is now late. Send them away and to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered to them, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go buy 200? What shall we go and buy 200 denera worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out they had, they had, they said five, five and two fish and then he commanded them to all sit down in groups of on the green grass so they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties and taking the five loaves and two fish he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people 
and he divided the two fish among them all. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and, and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were 5,000 men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to another side, <clears throat> to uh, Beth, Beth, Bethsaida, 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 yeah. yeah. while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken a leave to them, he went up into the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out in the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painful. They were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, and he went past them. But the, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out for all they for all that saw him, and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, "Take heart, it is I." Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gen Gennesaret and moored at the, to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And when and when he came when he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplace and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garments. And as as and as many as touched it were made well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. C. So interesting that also in this gospel, uh, in this uh, chapter, sorry, uh, we see just right away directly to the action and, and to the miracles and actions, 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 miracles, and all the works that uh, uh, Yeshua uh, is doing here. But interesting also that people still doesn't recognize him. And it happens still to till today. Uh, sometimes uh, when we were presented uh to Yeshua for the first time when we call him Jesus, uh, we just made a, an image of him, but who is he? And this is a very humane um, uh, question uh, to actually, who is he? And just with the uh, pass of time and just knowing the Bible a little bit more, we uh, start maybe thinking a little bit differently of Yeshua as we were presented with uh, the first time. And actually, it's very interesting that they also make the question, who is he? Is he Elijah? Is he John the Baptist? Who is he? And he, even his disciples in, in the other chapter that uh, uh, Carl read, uh, even his, uh, he, they were telling, who is this guy that actually rebukes the, the oceans and the, and, the, and the clouds and the rains and everything? So it's interesting uh, uh, to have this question, who is he? And we should still ask ourselves, who is he? Even if we have made our minds about his identity, we should still ask ourselves that question for him to answer, who is he? Okay. Uh, and yeah, interesting, all, all the miracles that he's doing here. Okay. A anything that, any commentaries that you may have, guys? I think anything four. Jump uh, into you? Yes? First four, um, in the complete Jewish Bible, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit better written, but but Yeshua said the only place people don't respect a prophet is in his hometown, among his own relatives, and is in his own house. And I, I you know, I, I expressed this uh, early on in my um, in my walk when I started following the Torah. Um, I started to share uh, some things with my my family, my children, my adult children, and. They just rejected it. And and I, I remember Joseph. Um, I was talking to Joseph um Wamishab, and he said, Yep, yeah, that's 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 normal. I says our family, some of the closest people we know will often reject what we tell them. Yes, yes, certainly that happens. Uh thank you, thank you, Carl, for, for sharing. 
Uh, any other commentaries, guys? Yes, Chuck? Just, oh, sorry, go, Chuck. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep it as, as short as, as possible. I've got probably a bullet point on every word that's in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just try to pick out the, the choice ones. Um, yeah, first of all, to, to uh, answer Carl, um, you know, uh, when um, in anything we do, right? <clears throat> the people who know us the best also know our warts and our failings the best, right? And they've seen us fall down. They, they, they knew us when we weren't believers. And they're probably the last people that will ever, you know, listen to us, take advice from us, um, uh, uh, learn from us because they, they, they know us. Or as a wise man once uh, told me in, in just about anything you do, you always make two lists, okay, when it comes to people. Um, uh, make one list of everybody you know and make one list, a very long list of everybody you've never met before in your entire life. And whatever you're doing, start with the biggest list first. <laughs> just, just, just very simple. <laughs> so, um, on to the, 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 the rest of what's, uh, what's packed in here. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the verses about King Herod and, and, uh, John the Baptist, I, I, I think it's very interesting that, uh, um, uh, you know, this comes up right after we spoke about the, the parable of the, uh, of the sower, because here's the parable of the sower in action. You know, uh, Herod is a, uh, Edomite, um, uh, uh, descent, you know, kind of perpetrating as a Jew to, to, to be king. Um, he has, but he's very interested in everything that John has to say. He respects John. He sees that John is, 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 a, is a prophet. He's a, a Sadiq. Um, uh, but at the same time, he completely, you know, turns his back on John and, and John's teachings to the point that he has him beheaded. So we have a great example of, of somebody with, with, you know, very shallow roots, right. As, as in the parable. Um, but I think, uh, uh, two of the, the, the biggest things here obviously are the feeding of, uh, of the 5,000. Wow. I mean, that's huge. And, you know, for the, the, the Jews who are always looking for signs, especially at, at this point in history, looking for signs of the, uh, the Messiah, you know, not even Moses, um, could provide, uh, uh the people food, only God. Um, could produce manna from from heaven, and here we have, if not you know the uh, 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 the first sign that uh, of the divinity of of uh, Yeshua, the divinity of uh, of the Messiah. It's like the first really huge. There's no denying his uh, uh, divinity at this point in time. Um, but then immediately after that, we have the story of of. Uh, uh, them on on uh, uh, the boat, and they're so afraid, and he he's you know he he's left kind of shocked. I uh, I think that they still haven't gotten it. They 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 just don't understand. Um, and I think that is a reflection on all of us at different points in our our walk. There it is, right in front of us, undeniable proof. But there's a part of us. You know, like uh, uh, like Herod, that you know, still wants to deny or or you know, um, are afraid to take those next steps, maybe. Um, so I think uh, this entire chapter kind of goes from from backwards to forwards. If you kind of read the stories starting from the bottom of the the chapter and work your way up to the point that that they're just completely uh, 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 denying him. I think it's a good reflection on, uh, on how a lot of us are in, uh, uh, in our walk with, uh, uh, with the Messiah in the face of undeniable proof. Anyway, that, that, that was as quick as I could make it. Love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> and welcome, Wolf, to the class too. Uh, I hope you can uh, listen to the class correctly. Uh, yes, Steve? Yeah, just adding to what uh, Carl was saying, and, uh, and it, it stood out to me too that that section at the beginning of uh, six is always a very yeah interesting uh, uh, section for me when I review it. Um, so like Carl says, you know, you go to your family, you go to some of your closest friends, 
thinking that they might uh, listen and uh, hear. And, and a lot of times they don't even want to listen or they don't want to hear, or if they do, if they do, uh, it is rejection. But um, I find uh, Yeshua's comment in verse six, and again, I checked it. It's, it's in all the gospels just written uh, in the first four gospels anyways, written a little bit differently, but uh, that he marveled, like the ESV says, he marveled because of their unbelief. Uh, um, I think, yeah, in the complete Jewish Bible, he says he was amazed at their lack of trust. And then there's variations through the, uh, um, through the rest of the Gospels. But uh, that's Yeshua speaking, right? Uh, uh, and he says, yeah, he was marveled because of their unbelief. And I know nothing marvels God. We are only marveled by God. But I, that just kind of stuck out in me, to me a little bit that he was like, wow, they, they don't need, I'm right here and they still don't get it. So uh, anyways, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And actually, it's like, uh, having the four gospels is so amazing to us because some people will just go for his words he, they are just accepting uh, his sermons like uh, in the Ma uh, gospel of matthew but in in this one is the signs and, and actions of yeshua and the miracles of yeshua so whether you are just more with more tendency to listen to the words directly then matthew is a very useful gospel if you want to look to the signs and the miracles, then th there is the gospel of, of uh, Mark. And in the gospel of Luke and John, we'll see that, well, you need the whole story. You need the whole man. Then there's Luke. <laughs> so interesting, interesting that we have the four gospels for different aspects of our own lives, um, depending on our character and our personality. Uh, and we'll see also that... Um, Mark will also present us the Yeshua that has been rejected. We'll discuss that in, in, a, in a moment. Uh, Chuck, are you still there? And can you help us out with uh, chapter 10, please? I don't know if Chuck's still in the class. Yeah, sure. Okay. Chapter 10, please. Move over here. I apologize. Kids are all trying to get ready and into into town. Chapter 10. Then Yeshua left that place and went into the regions of uh, Judah and the territory beyond the uh, Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him. And again, as usual, he taught them. Some Parushim, uh, Pharisees, came up and tried to trap him by asking him, does the Torah permit a man to divorce his wife? He replied, what did Moshe command you? They said, Moshe allowed a man to hand his wife a get and divorce her. But Yeshua said to them, he wrote this commandment for you because of your hard heartedness. However, at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man should leave his father and mother and be united with his wife and the two are to become one flesh. Thus, they are no longer two, but one. So then, no one should break apart what God has joined together. When they were indoors once more, the Talmudin asked him about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against his wife. And if a wife divorces her husband and marries another man, she too commits adultery. People were bringing children to him so that he might touch them. But the Talmudin rebuked those people. However, when Yeshua saw it, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Yes, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. And he took them in his arms, laid his hands on them, and made a uh, blessing over them. As he was starting on his way, a man ran up, kneeled down in front of him, and asked, Good rabbi, what should I do to obtain eternal life? Yeshua said to him, Why are you calling me good? No one is good except God. You know the mitzvot. Don't, mur don't murder, or you know the commandments. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give false testimony. Don't defraud. Honor your father and mother. Rabbi, he said, I have kept all of these since I was a boy. Yeshua, looking at him, 
felt love for him and said to him, you're missing one thing. Go sell whatever you own, give to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come, follow me. Shocked by his word, he went away sad because he was a wealthy man. Yeshua looked around and said to his Talmudin, How hard is it going to be for people with wealth to enter the kingdom of God? The Talmudin were astounded at these words, but Yeshua said to them again, My friends, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It's easier for a camel to pass through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were utterly amazed and said to him, Then who can be saved? Yeshua looked at them and said, Humanly, it is impossible, but not with God. With God, everything is possible. Kepha, Peter, began saying to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Yeshua said, Yes. I tell you that there is no one who has left house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundred times over. Now in the Olam Haaretz, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands with persecutions. And in the Olam Haba, eternal life in the world to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem. Yeshua was walking ahead of them, and it, they were amazed, and those fro following were afraid. So again, taking the twelve along with him, he began telling them what was about to happen to him. We are now going up to Jerusalem, where the Son of Man will be handed over to the head Kohanim, the head priest, and the Torah teachers, the scribes. They will sentence him to death and turn him over to the Goyim, who will jeer at him, spit on him, beat him, and kill him. But after three days, he will rise. Yaakov and Yochanan, the sons of Zavdi, Zavadi, came up to him and said, Rabbi, we would like you to do us a favor. He said to them, what do you want me to do for you? They replied, when you are in your glory, let us sit with you, one on your right hand and the other on your left. But Yeshua answered, you don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup that I am drinking or be immersed with the immersion that I must undergo? They said to him, we can. Yeshua replied, the cup that I am drinking, you will drink, and the immersion I'm being immersed with, you will undergo. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. Rather, it is for those for whom it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the other ten heard this, they became outright outraged at Yaakov and Yochanan. But Yeshua called them to him and said to them, You know that among the Goyim, those who are supposed to rule them become tyrants, and their superiors become dictators. But among you, it must not be like that. On the contrary, whoever among you wants to be a leader must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first among you must become everyone's slave. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. They came to Jericho, and as Yeshua was leaving Jericho with his Talmudin and a great crowd, a blind beggar, Bar Timai, son of Timai, was sitting by the side of the road. When he heard that it was Yeshua from Nazareth, he started shouting, Yeshua, son of David, have pity on me. Many people scolded him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Yeshua stopped and said, Call him over. They called to the blind man. Courage, get up. He's calling for you. Throwing down his blanket, he jumped up and came over to Yeshua. What do you want me to do for you? asked Yeshua. The blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me be able to see again. Yeshua said to him, Go, your trust has healed you. 
Instantly, he received his sight and followed him on the road. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck, for the reading. Uh, as we can see, just miracle after miracle after uh, miracle. Uh, it has always amazed me the, the verses or the, the narrative of the rich young man that it, it always like kind of break my, breaks my heart uh, because it actually has a parallel with Abraham. You remember Abraham when God, God called him and he said, just leave your... Uh, Leave your parents, leave your house, leave your territory, leave everything and follow me. Uh, so this is happening as almost as the same. Uh, because this guy asked, uh, good teacher, what do I do? What must I do to inherit an eternal life? And Yeshua says, just leave everything. Leave everything. Give everything to the poor and just follow me. And it's interesting that verse 22 says, disheartened by he, by the saying, he went away sorrow, sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So interesting that everything material just held him back. And this is just a theory, just a personal theory. I have not listened to anyone uh, with this theory uh, other, other than myself. It's just a theory because... There will be a guy in chapter 14, if you want to jump to chapter 14. And it's just a big what if, what if. Uh, in verse uh, chapter 14, verse 51, there's another young man. Interesting that this young man, and this is just my theory. I, I haven't <laughs> uh, heard anyone uh, else following this theory. What if this young man is the same young man that happened before uh, in, in the other verses, the rich man. Because he, in verse 51 says, and a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body. And they seized him, the Romans. Uh, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. So what if this guy is the same one? It might be the same one, that he actually left everything, even his own clothing, and he just ran away naked. That's interesting. That's an interesting theory about this just a possibility. Because the the identity of this naked guy is not said, it's not shown. No, nobody knows who this naked guy is. And this is just a theory. What if he's the same young man that was uh disheartened by Yeshua's words? It might be. And actually, this is a, a whole teaching for us to leave everything and to uh, all these uh, material, emotional, even mental attachments that we may have, uh, to leave everything just to follow him, even to the point to be naked before him. Interesting, interesting uh, reflection that, that we may have. I don't know, guys, if you have any commentaries on this chapter 10. As you can see, it's just full of also teachings and and observations and miracles. Uh, interesting, interesting chapter number 10. So let's wrap it up. Let's go to chapter 16. Chapter 16 uh, is happening after resurrection. And I don't know if in your Bible said... Uh, that verses 9 to 20, which are the, the final verses of this chapter 16, in some early manuscripts, they are they do not appear. So there's a big possibility that uh, the gospel of, of Mark ends up in verse number 8. But it's like, it's like, it's, it's incomplete. It, it feels incomplete. Uh, without verses 9 to 20, but the verses 9 to 20 might not be in the original part. And it actually, as we uh, started this uh, this gospel, you remember, it just start, started right away with uh, the baptism of Yeshua and then the miracles and everything without telling anything, anything else from the, from the history of Yeshua. And then here, it will then abruptly uh, finish this, this gospel in verse number 8. And let's read uh, these eight verses. So when the Sabbath was passed, 
Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb, and they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone from us, for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Yeshua of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they, and they went out and fled from the tomb, from, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So that might be the end of, of, of chapter 16. But let's read the, the next verses. Uh, some people say that they just somebody else grabbed these passages from the uh, from Matthew or Mark and John and Luke and John and just uh, copy pasted to this <laughs> to this last chapter. But even though if it finishes in this verse number eight, it's okay. The, there's nothing missing. But let's go to chapter nine, uh, verse number nine. Sorry. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went, at, she went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After these things, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. After, afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly po poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord, the Lord Yeshua, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by accompanying, accompanying signs. So if these verses are just part of it, this doesn't really make a big difference, but still uh, important for us to understand the whole message, uh, the whole message of the gospel of Mark. And actually uh, he's presenting Yeshua as the suffering servant. This is very interesting also embedded here in the, in the book of, of Mark that Yeshua, as, Ma as Carl was saying, he also was rejected by his own family. We can see that in chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. And actually they say, well, what is happening with Yeshua? <laughs> he's crazy. And he's also rejected by his community, as, as Carl read on uh, that when he came to, uh, to Nazareth, he couldn't make any big miracles just for a few people. He was rejected by his community. They said, who is this guy? Isn't he the, the son of the carpenter? And also he's rejected for his religion, the Judaism. You know, all chapter 14, we didn't read it, uh, but it actually mentions how they are they want to persecute him uh, because of their of his religion. So he's shown in this gospel as the suffering servant. He, even though all the miracles, all the actions, and all the teachings, they still he still was rejected. So let's end up with this uh, uh, conclusion. In this gospel, our Messiah, Messiah Yeshua is presented, who received all the power or, or all the authority to reign. However, before entering his kingdom, 
he accepted rejection, contempt, servitude, and death, since in the divine perspective, the path for exaltation is first humiliation. And let's read also, uh, as a conclusion of this gospel, uh, Philippians, <coughs> sorry, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 18. Uh, Steve, can you help us out with uh, that one? Philippians 2. Yep. Philippians 2, 1, 1 to 18. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, actually, well, I'm going to read from um, the complete Jewish Bible this time. Therefore, if you have any encouragement for me from you being in union with the Messiah, any comfort flowing from love, any fellowship with my, me in the spirit, or any compassion and sympathy, then complete my joy by having a common purpose and a common love, by being one in heart and in mind. Do nothing out of rivalry or vanity, but in humility, regard each other as better than yourselves. Look out for each other's interests and not just your, for your own. Let your attitude toward one another be governed by your being in union with the Messiah, Yeshua. Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God something to be possessed by force. On the contrary, he emptied himself in that he took, from, he took the form of a slave by becoming like human beings are. And when he appeared as a human being, he humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even to death, death on a stake as a criminal. Therefore, God raised him to the highest place and gave him the name above every name, that in honor of the name given, Yeshua, every knee will bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue will acknowledge that Yeshua, the Messiah, is Adonai, to the glory of God the Father. So, my dear friends, just as you have always obeyed when I was with you, it is even more important that you obey now that, now when I am away from you, Keep, keep working out your deliverance with fear and trembling. For God is the one working among you both the with, both for God is the one working among you the willing and the, and the working for what pleases him. Do everything without kvetching. Kvetching. What's the English word Moy? you're reading from the ESV? What is it? It's, uh, it's grumbling or disputing. Okay, yeah, it's got in the Jewish kvetching. <laughs> Is I was saying that right? K k kvetching or k not sure. <laughs> k k v e t c h i n g, kvetch. Anyways, oh, maybe <laughs> are, are grumbling and arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God without defect in the midst of a twisted and perverted generation, among among whom you shine like stars in the sky. As you hold on to the word of life, if you do this, I will be able to boast when the day of the Messiah comes that I did not run or toil for, no for nothing. Indeed, even my lifeblood is poured out as a drink offering with a sacrifice in service of your faith. I will still be glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should do you should too be you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, good so, words. In, interesting what uh, Paul is telling us here. Uh, he's like the best example for us to follow. He is the best example for us to follow. Uh, he is the example. Uh, but a very good um, a very good list that we can write is all the conscious miracles that we know that he has done for us. Or the other question would be, has he, our Messiah, has he has done any miracles for you specifically? Write them down in a, in a piece of paper uh, throughout the week. And that, will sh that should make us more humble and grateful uh, for what he has done for us. Because uh, let me tell you a little bit uh, uh, of things. Back in the day, I was like, well, Yeshua hasn't really made anything for me, you know. Uh, he really, well, I've seen miracles in other people. I I, I witnessed it. 
uh, as I told you, uh, the healing of a cancer of a person, uh, the restoration of a family that uh, was just all messed up. And I say, oh, well, that's okay. I can, I can bear with it if he hasn't done anything for me. But wait a moment. When I became conscious about all the miracles that he has done already for me, I just became more uh, grateful uh, of everything. And actually, it was ungrateful for me not recognizing what he has done for me. So it is a very good list for you to write also. Uh, to be aware of everything that he already has done for us. Uh, just starting with his forgiveness of all our sins and all the miracles that he does every day for us. Yes, Steve? Sorry, Moy, did you say me? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, and just as you were saying that, Moy, and you were talking about making the list, I, I was thinking along the same lines as you a little bit, where... I, I, I was uh, uh, blessed to see uh, many miracles. And um, at the beginning, again, it was kind of like, oh, yeah. But, but at some point, and I don't know when it was, because it was, you know, in my 20s, um, late in my 20s, let's say into my 30s, that I started, I, I came back to the evangelical church. There was a gap from 18 to 28 where I was kind of, you know, walking more hand in hand with Satan than I was uh, spending time with Yeshua and more in the world, I should say. And, um, but when I, when I started seeing that, and again, upon reflection, I was, uh, there was a moment and I'm still thankful as I, as we do this class this morning, that, that I was allowed and had the privilege and the honor to, to see the miracles in other people, right. To recognize uh, the, the, again, that humility that it's not about me at all. It, it, it kind of goes back, kind of goes back to that time when he was in Nazareth and he's with all the people and he's kind of doing pir miracles and they're kind of going, ah, yeah, well, that's a, you know, that's a, that carpenter's son. That was that, you know, that little annoying boy that was running around and that too. And, 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 the, and, you, and they just kind of go, well, yeah, whatever. Right. And, and yet other people, as he went to other places, they were like, wow. And, and, you know, maybe they were all hoping for miracles, but uh, um, but it was still, they recognized him as uh, as Yeshua. They recognized him as the Messiah coming. And, uh, um, yeah, I think it's important. Uh, uh, yeah, we of, of course, we, we like things uh, uh, to stay good in our lives. But, yeah, just to see the glory of God working around in other situations is very important, too. And I like the idea of that, too, Moya, making lists, just to comment on, too. I never thought of that, to make a list. Um, I've often thought about writing down uh, in my testimony and, you know, kind of moments, you know, like you shared again with the bathroom and, and I, and I have some of my own stories too, but, uh, uh, but yeah, I've never thought of just writing down the simple uh, moments where, uh, uh, yeah, they, they were miracles, even though you don't think they were miracles, they were probably miracles. Right. So, uh, but yeah, good idea. I, I, I'm going to try and do that. Yeah, let us know how it goes, uh, because yeah, sometimes uh, we don't know how is it is going to be in the next few weeks, months, years, but when difficult times come, we can grab this list and be thankful again. So that's why this this list might become very important for us, uh, in order to not forget, because our mind will tend to forget, but not forgetting what he has done already for us. Okay, so yeah, it is very important. Okay, guys, so let's go to the key verse to memorize this week. It will be this one. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So that would be chapter 10, verses 43 to 45. So important also to uh, the, the acknowledgement of what he has done for us uh, will make us humble to serve others. Not because we want to be the first uh, or to sit to his right or to his left. No, because we are humble about and grateful of everything that he has done for us. So the only thing that we can do is to, uh, to as he says, 
uh, slavable, slavable, uh, because even he's setting the example. He is not coming to be served, but to serve. So it is very important for us to to acknowledge that too. He's setting out the example. Okay, my friends. So that's it for today's lesson to this today's session. Uh, I don't know if you want to add any other commentaries or contributions to the class. Is that it? Okay. Well, uh, Carl, can you help us out? Pray, please. Heavenly Father, we we thank you, Father, for this time to meet together. It's you uh, in the scriptures. It says that we're two or more are gathered together. That you are here, Father. And we thank you, Father, for this time. And we come together, Father, as men to 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 um, to try to perfect ourselves, Father, our responsibility to in serving you, our responsibility to be functional. And we can't do it without your power, Father, and your word. And we ask, we thank you, Father, for your precious word. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit that helps us to understand and, and apply your word, Father. We thank you, Father, for all the men here. We pray for the, the men that, that are in the area of Florida, I think, where the storm is. I pray that you watch over them with your with your uh, protection uh, pr uh, protective hand, Father. Watch over them, protect them. We thank you, Father, for Brother Moy and the time that he spends with us uh, to serve you, Father, and bring in your word and to, to help us to, uh, to look at it more closely. We thank you, Father, for Steve, Chuck, um, and uh, Wolf and Todd, we thank you, Father, for all these men. Uh, we thank you, Father, for Yeshua and what he's done for us and our salvation, Father. Thank you so much, Father, for your provision each and every day through your word. Thank you, Father. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Amen. Okay, my friends, uh, have a blessed and functional week. And God willing, see you next Sunday. Okay? Take care. Shavuot for you. Shavuot. Bye-bye.